the screwdriver in here and turn. It's supposed to turn one way and not the other, but mine appears to be screwed both ways. These are replacement instructions on the M271 alternator pulley. Uh, these uh, decoupling pulley uh, instructions also apply to other engines as well. Uh, for the M271 C230 engines specifically, uh, the first thing you want to do is remove the uh, drive belt. Um, you can watch my other video on how to do that. Now, once the drive belt, uh, drive belt is removed, um, the alternator pulley is uh, quite accessible. Uh, as you can see, it's just um, right in front of the intake tube right there. Um, and you should be able to replace the pulley without taking out the alternator. First thing you want to do is uh, get yourself a pick and pry apart, or pry open the uh, front protective cap that's right here. Uh, there's some slots that runs that run across. You see one right here that run across the circumference of the cap. Uh, just stick a pick in there and just pull it out. Uh, by the time you get this out far enough, you can stick a, a flathead screwdriver in there and just turn it to pry out, uh, pry out the, the cap. The cap, you will see the spline section of the alternator pulley. Uh, that is what you'll be engaging to remove the pulley. Uh, to do this, you also need to purchase an alternator spline tool. Uh, essentially, it's this spline key, as you can see it has multiple teeth on it. And what happens is, depending on your, your pulley, you might have um, a triple square or a Torx uh, socket that's inside, and you lock the alternator in place, and this goes through the spline key, and the spline key is held in place by a wrench, and that holds the alternator in place and that way you can take the alternator off. So just to demonstrate this is how it works. This spline key goes into the middle. This goes through it. Get this out of the way. Sorry you might need two hands for this. But it goes in the middle and it locks it in place and you turn you should be you sh you should turn this counterclockwise, and that will take the pulley off. Uh, the pulley from factory has about 80 foot pounds of torque on it, so uh, when you torque it back on, make sure you also torque it to spec. So as you can see from the setup, I got a half inch torque wrench, uh, sorry not torque wrench, half inch breaker bar on the uh, torx torx bit, and then a 17 millimeter. Uh, open box wrench on the spline key. Um, you keep this stationary and I believe you turn this. So I'll try to take it off. I advise you to tie up the uh, intake hose that goes into the resonator. Um, that way you have room to access this without having to fiddle with this. I essentially just took some shoelace and I tied it to the uh, hood damper right here. Uh, uh, the direction of uh, a force uh, in removing this uh, because initially I was actually turning the wrong way um, so just to break down um, this uh, is actually uh, inside at least for my vehicle at least for this pulley actually or this alternator the inside is actually a triple square uh, I initially used um, I believe it was uh, Torx and uh, I'm pretty sure I wore out one of the one of the teeth that was in there, uh, one of the tooth it, that was in there. So uh, make sure you inspect uh, the exact um, uh, bit that you need uh, before you start this. Um, so in terms of the direction of pull, this torque wrench and what it's holding on to is the spindle of the alternator. So that's essentially supposed to be uh, stationary and this pulley turns counterclockwise to uh, unscrew off of that spindle. So you have your spline, uh, spline key that's inside here. What you want to do is turn the uh, spline key this way, so you're putting force this way so that you can turn the pulley this way. Um, 
and you're supposed to keep this stationary because that's essentially the the, the spindle that this pulley rides on so uh initially i was pushing the other way uh because i wasn't aware of uh how the pulley was mounted onto the spindle uh but now that you know make sure you turn the correct way uh or else you'll just be pulling and tugging um all day uh because uh, it, it did actually take quite a bit of force, like I said earlier, 80 uh, foot-pounds of torque just to uh, uh, unscrew the pulley on the correct side. Um, another trick that I use uh, uh, when, I, when I had the wrench on the, on the spline key was uh, to double up on the wrenches. Um, so you can find this on YouTube, but uh, essentially that was a 17 millimeter. Uh, instead of using the um, open-ended side, I used the... Uh, closed end side. Uh, that way, I had um, uh, I made sure that it didn't slip off the spline key. Uh, so I had this part exposed, um, and essentially, I just took my took a larger wrench and I doubled up on here to give myself more leverage. Uh, you can find more instructions on how to double up double up a wrench uh, on YouTube. Um, but as you can see, uh, now that the spline this is holding it this pulley just spins freely off the spindle and uh, uh, since this wasn't replaced for over 250,000 kilometers uh, it was pretty much rusted onto the spindle and it took a little bit more force um, I also sprayed some uh, penetrating oil uh, into the uh, into the crevice uh, hoping that it would help a little um, so you can try that as well so that's the, uh, the spindle itself as you can see that's the whole square bit that's still hanging on and that's the pulley that's on top of. this is the uh, alternator pulley that came off the car just now this is the new one um, during my power steering video uh, I was able to identify my alternator as a Bosch make uh, versus a Vallejo uh, that's the other brand that makes alternators for Mercedes um, in my case, the Bosch uh, required an INA uh, pulley. That's the brand. Um, the one that actually came off of my car also says INA on it. Uh, as you can see on that uh, circular plate, it says INA. You might not be able to see it, but it does say INA made in Germany. Uh, on this one, you see it very clearly, INA made in Germany, or it says Germany. Um, box it came in and this was about I think $80 at CarQuest in the Toronto area it might be cheaper in the US um, the part number is right there if it will focus for me that's the part number 271-155-0115 um, so so one way to test, uh, well obviously it's kind of late to test now, but I kind of figured it out already. Uh, I, stuck, um, uh, fill, I stuck a flathead screwdriver into the rotor of the alternator and tried turning my old pulley both ways and it was actually locked both ways. It should actually just lock one way and freewheel the other way. Uh, in, my case, in my case this was stuck. So when I got this one, I tested it out by uh, putting my sp spline key into this and turning the pulley and it, it should take from documentation as you can see I'm actually able to turn this the other way and it should take less than one uh, foot-pound of torque to turn the flywheel direction on this one no matter how much force I put it's not turning so uh, it's most definitely seized on the flywheel direction there's a lot of inertia with the spinning alternator so when your when your engine slows down the belt is inherently slowing down but because it's not allowed to freewheel in the opposite direction uh, it's actually going to cause uh, the belt to jump um, or slip on the alternator pulley and it, it can definitely interfere with a lot of the other pulleys in the system um, uh, I think one of the things that were mentioned was the AC compressor uh, that fails very commonly on this engine. Um, so a lot of people have been replacing these uh, alternator pulleys and uh, I'm doing that right now. Um, one thing you want to check when you get your item is make sure 
it's identical uh, same height same amount of um, ribs on the um, ribs only side carefully don't forget to uh, re reinstall uh, the new dust cap that comes with your new pulley. Uh, one thing I want to mention is I kept mentioning 80 foot pounds for the torque for the pulley. Uh, I checked the Mercedes workshop information system and it's actually uh, 60 pounds for uh, the Bosch alternators. Uh, so it's 60 foot pounds of torque. I'm going to put this back in place. It's a lot quieter now. Tensioner pulley used to bounce around at idle and I no longer see that. I'm not sure if it's because of my seized alternator pulley or something else but I'm highly suspecting it was my alternator pulley causing that.